Well, if you're looking for better, more professional looking prints and you just are struggling with getting the right settings and techniques to get there, in this video, we're gonna go over a few super simple methods to improve your print quality, so stick around. The first simple method is just to print one part at a time. This seems almost too simple to even mention, but it is by far the best way to reduce cleanup time for your prints. And it does result in exceptional quality prints every time. This method basically removes the travels between parts which can result in service irregularities like blobs and stringing. All right, along with this, you need to turn on combing as well, which I've covered in a previous video. The link will be above which will always keep travel movements within the part. If you don't do this, you will still end up with some surface imperfections. So if the first method just isn't possible, you can also adjust the position of your parts to have unseen sides opposed to each other. This will place all the travels between the parts through the sides, which are not gonna be visible, and it'll conceal those irregularities in the final product. Um, in other words, it'll cover up the problem. Again, make sure that you have combing turned on as well. All right, so let's say you just can't afford to wait and you also want your prints to look pristine like they were printed one at a time. So there is one experimental setting to test out. I know it's not gonna work for everything. It is really only meant to be used for smaller parts, but maybe it can work for you. So to get this going, you need to head over to settings, configure settings visibility, and turn on print sequence. Now find that and activate print one at a time. Be careful with this feature, by the way. If your printer gantry size settings are not correct, you can do some damage to your printer that you will definitely regret as it tries to move through a part that it's already printed. So place the small parts on and spread them away from each other manually using the boxes that are shown and see if it'll slice. If you can make this technique work for you, you're gonna be able to get professional quality looking prints, but you're gonna be able to print multiple at a time as well. It's time to test these features out. The first test is with combing mode turned off and the print sequence set to all at once. I have the build plate all buttered up and ready. For our testing, we will be using a PETG with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I have 225 degree nozzle temperature and I'm using 75 degrees for the bed. I'm using glue stick for adhesion and ease of separation afterward. 0.16 layer height, four wall lines, five bottom layers, six top layers, and all of the other details will be noted in the description below for all of our tests in this video. I'm using the IR sensor to get an idea of how much cooler the top of the part is due to the movement cycle between parts, and we'll use that information on our next test. In the second test, which includes printing one at a time with combing turned on, we're also going to need to turn on the cooling fans to cool this as much as possible to be comparable with the other test, otherwise the overhangs are going to suffer. I like to use Spaghetti Detective with Octoprint and Raspberry Pi uh, to monitor all my prints from anywhere. Uh, this also means that you can start and stop your prints from anywhere using your phone, for example, and that comes in handy every so often. When the print's all finished, it will send you an email and that way you know you can get started on the next one. Again, the second test, we have the fans turned on to 100% and this setup will print only one part at a time. All of the other settings are identical to the first test. Now hopefully here you can see that the channel for the x-axis uh, movement and the shroud could collide with the part if the settings are not correct. I went ahead and printed a few more samples with the fan set to 100% and combing still turned on for comparison as well. Also, just a note, no cleanup has been performed on any of these parts. So let's review. All right, to start, let's have a look inside of each of the tapered cylinders. 
So for sample number one, we have a small amount of irregularities, including a few blobs and uh, some small bumps in the surface finish on the interior. Sample number two, we have one sample with a small blob towards the bottom. Uh, it could be from the filament just stuck to the nozzle uh, that was released at some point. The rest of the insides look clean except for just very fine strands indicative of PETG. Now sample number three was printed uh, for comparison purposes with random seams and 0.1 millimeter thick layer height. We are seeing a small amount of rough texture and an odd kind of a swirling pattern towards the bottom. I printed the sample to show how thinner layers can help to hide the random seams. However, they also have some other issues with the sample in particular. Sample number four was printed for comparison as well with random seams, except for it's printed with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. We're seeing a nice looking print with the exception of slight blobs at the seam locations. Now this has been my experience with random seams with a Bowden setup. I see less of these issues with a direct drive setup. And sample number five, this is more of an experiment for comparison using the same settings as sample number two. However, it's introducing a color change, less sheen, and a slight textured surface. We're seeing a very good result mixed with some other benefits from the carbon fiber, which make it tough to pick up any visual defects. However, I will warn that carbon fiber will ruin your brass nozzle. It will also ruin your extruder gear, and it's been known to clog up uh, due to the tiny fibers included in the filament. Let's compare the outside. Sample number one, we're seeing some large blobs on the surface. PETG is pretty tough to sand. This can be most easily cleaned up with a knife, but it will result in some visual defects. And there are a few other visual defects as well near the seam. Sample number two is a very clean print. Now, if you have corners on your parts, the seams are best placed at the corner. And uh, of course, these parts don't have any, so the seams are fairly visible. Sample number three, we have the same kind of telegraphing whirling effect that can be seen on the inside as well and the random seams are slightly visible also. Sample number four, the print quality is good but the random seams are fairly visible. Sample number five is a very clean print. The texture, sheen and color all help to produce a really high quality looking product. Now there are lots of ways to improve print quality but not many as simple as just printing one part at a time along with turning combing on and adjusting the seam location on your print. So what do you guys think about these methods? Do you have better ways to improve print quality? If you do, please comment below or send me an email at needitmakeit at gmail.com. Thanks for watching everyone and don't forget to subscribe and like so you don't miss out on other interesting and unique 3D printing videos to come. Take care and we'll see you on the next one.